Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Live. So this video is going to be uh, part of the series and the playlist, Oil Field 101. Uh, when the series is done, it'll take you step by step through every little dinky detail of, of how what it takes to make a living, the field operations anyway, and the poor oil line, what I do for a living. Uh, a long story about this well, uh, and as short as I can do it here, we had a lot of trouble with it. The well actually got plugged up, it wouldn't give up any fluid. Uh, we went in there, washed it out, uh, pumped into it, did you know, fixed the fixed the well. The well now will make fluid. I had Rick come out here, run the pump in it, run the tubing rods, everything, hung it, hung it back on, and now the pump's not hardly putting out any fluid. So I didn't want to make this video about about pumps, but I realized in editing this video that I've got to give you some context. So this is a tubing pump. This this barrel that starts here, comes out through here. This is a tubing pump barrel. This is the type of plunger that I've got in the barrel. Now you'll real, you'll you'll notice that there's no actual seals. The only part of seals, of course, this is rough and this is junk, uh, but this fits very close and very tight inside a chrome bore that's inside that barrel. Now this is what's called the traveling valve or the plunger. Uh, there's actually a valve. There's a ball and seat that's in here, and this is actually the valve. Now there's another piece. It looks sort of like this. It's got C cups. It's called a standard valve. I don't have one in here. You'll you'll drop it from the surface down the tubing. It'll fall and land, and it seats in this, and it's just a check valve. It'll let fluid come up, but not fall down, and that's called the standard valve. And so how this works is the plunger is inside this barrel, comes down to here, and when the rods pick the plunger up, it pulls and pushes fluid to the surface. When the plunger no longer is traveling up, the standing valve will shut. Uh, the plunger goes back down and the fluid actually travels through the inside of it. It's hollow, comes up through this valve. And then when it's all the way down, and starts back up. This ball and seat will have fell against the, against the, uh, against the seat and, and sealed off. And of course, when it's picked up, it takes another stroke. Anyway, uh, what's going on is this is war or the barrels war and whenever the plunger is picked up, there's a significant amount of fluid slippage that just goes by the plunger. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run in here and measure the efficiency of the pump. I'm gonna show you how you can measure how much fluid the pump is putting out. Uh, and then we're going to do a calculation to figure out how much the fluid the, the pump should make. And then to counteract this, as well runs really slow, I'm just going to speed it up and see if, uh, and see if we can counteract the efficiency loss by but basically putting more horsepower into it. So I hope you can hear me. The wind's blowing a little bit. If I have to voice some of this over, I will. I'd like to first start off and talk about how I can tell that the pump is not pumping all the fluid that the well has given up. So what I've done here, obviously you can't do this on a real tall unit, but if you put a wrench on your polish rod and you put a, a, a torque on it, you can actually feel the ball and seats in the pump change directions. And I'm I'm trying to hold a, a steady force and if you'll notice at the top of the bottom the load changes as it pulls the wrench tighter because it's pulling the rattle back tight and up the top it relaxes just a little bit i'm not making that movement i'm just trying to hold a steady force uh the the well in the pump is what is causing the wrench to torque back and forth so hold this thought for a few minutes and we'll revisit this and i'll make it make more sense at the end of the video so basically what we're going to do here is I've got an empty five gallon bucket. I'm on a timer on my phone. I'm going to shut this valve and open this valve. And we're going to see how long it takes to fill this bucket up. So that did not go to plan. I don't know if you saw, but there at the end, my bucket had a pinhole and it started running out under the bucket. Um, 
this is not going to be a very precise test but it will it'll illustrate my point nonetheless um, it was just under four minutes the bucket was close to half full it wasn't quite half full and it leaked a little bit out I want to say it was about four minutes per two and a half gallons so if we take um, a calculator on the phone two and a half gallons divided by three minutes four minutes times 60 is going to be 37 and a half gallons per hour times 24 divided by 42 is 21 barrels per day total production to be honest i would have thought 20 barrels would have been all the fluid this thing would have made now i've actually got an app on my phone that we can use to calculate how much fluid this thing should be putting out in a perfect situation i got really tongue-tied trying to explain it and the stupid thing wouldn't focus but we're saying 20 inch stroke with a 1 in 25 30 second tubing pump with five and a half strokes a minute it should put out about 45 to 50 barrels of fluid per day these pumps are never 100 percent efficient but often they're 90 or so uh, you know this one's down you know to around 50. Like I say, all the parts in the pump, the valves and stuff, are all in pretty good shape. Uh, but all it is, is probably either the plunger or the barrel's worn a few thousands, and it causes fluid to go by that. So I got a voice that's over. The wind noise was horrible. The audio was unusable. So the first thing here is the two different shivs. I'm going to pull the small shiv off and put the bigger shiv on. Um, you'll see in a minute, I just tap this thing with a hammer and it shatters, and so I get mad. And just start beating it and kind of busting it up to get the small shiv off. Uh, the shiv that's going back on it is about twice as big. It's a QD style hub. It's a tapered hub. You put it on the motor. It's got three bolts in it. You, the hub is sort of pulled up into the into the uh, shiv, and that swedges the uh, the hub down onto the shaft of the motor. This thing was running about five and a half strokes a minute. Uh, I went about twice as big with a shiv. It should be about 10 or 11 or 12 strokes a minute, something like that. I didn't actually measure it. This should increase the output um, of the pump by about 40 barrels, something like that. So it should go from making 20 barrels total fluid to 60. This will be plenty of fluid to pump it down. Uh, and then after it starts pumping down, I'll come back and slow it back down. It won't need to go this fast. Uh, at the end. So I had to scoot the motor forward, uh, take the motor skid loose, get the belt on. I'm tightening the skid back up, putting the belt on and snugging the belt up and uh, and get it all tightened back down and uh, and then I'm going to crank it up. Alright, so there we go. It's running quite a bit faster, but it's still not stupid fast. Let's go stick a bucket under it and see and watch it pump a few strokes if it looks a little better. The, uh, as you can see, we're getting a lot more fluid, a lot more per stroke, and a lot more strokes per minute. Uh, the fluid that is slipping back by the pump, and that's the industry terminology, is pump slippage, is going to stay the same regardless of how fast the well runs. So when it was running really slow, about half of the fluid was slipping back by the pump, about 20 or 25 barrels per day. Now that we've sped it up, the pump will have a theoretical output of about 100 barrels per day, but we'll still only have the same 25 or 30 barrels of slippage. So as you speed the well up, the efficiency percentage doesn't stay the same, but the uh, deviation from the well's theoretical output in barrels per day uh, stays about the same. So we went from about 20 barrels total production per day up to about 60. All right, so it's the next day. Sorry about the wind. The wind's picking up by the minute. I'm gonna try to get this done real quick. Uh, it's early this morning. It's only been like probably 18 hours since we were out here. We were out here pretty late last night, but we've done some good. I'd like to take you over here and show you. Uh, we do have a nice fluid pound here. We're about hitting about three quarters of a barrel. And again, I'm just trying to kind of hold a bind on this, on this wrench here. Anyway, so this means that the well has given up about three quarters or so of the fluid that this pump is capable of pumping and bringing to the surface. What's happening when this is pounding fluid is the plunger picks the fluid up and there isn't enough fluid down here to fill the cavity that this picks up. So it actually falls back down until it hits the fluid or pound the bottom of the plunger pounds the fluid uh, and then it forces fluid up and opens that and that's what causes the pound. <laughs> Oh, 
This is the first time I've seen the oil out of this thing in six months, maybe. It's a long time. A long time and a lot of money. Well, anyway, that's about the size of it. I, uh, I hope you learned something, uh, you know, to kind of show how uh, how you can sort of test. I know my bucket had a hole in it that didn't go so great, but kind of show you how you can test the uh, the fluid output of one of those wells. This will be the end of this video. I've got a, a, an additional part to this video I'd like to kind of do, and I'd like to talk about the uh, the financial disaster that this oil well has been for me. I don't know if disaster is the right word. I guess it's probably going to be all right. Uh, but the literal, you know, small fortune I've spent on it, um, I, I just like to show how sometimes you can buy something that's that's very cheap that looks like it's going to be a good deal, and it turned out to just really be. I don't know if you call it a bad deal, but definitely cost you a bunch of money. So I bought this lease. There's uh, there was three producers and an injection well on it. Uh, it was during the negative oil prices. I you know whatever, uh, March or April of 2020, I don't remember exactly when that was. But anyway, March or April, May or June, I don't really remember. Anyway, um, the guy basically gave it away. Uh, the lease has got, like I said, has got three producers. He told me one of them was no good, uh, just made clear water. Uh, and there was two wells. He told me they made about a barrel a piece. They didn't quite come out to making a barrel a piece. They made about three quarters of a barrel a piece or something. Um, but anyway, he just gave it away effectively uh, I think I actually paid five thousand bucks for it or something but anyway the whole lease and I'm not talking bad about the guy I got to know him and I really like him he's a nice guy but the whole lease was just absolutely as ran down uh, to total junk as you can get it he wouldn't spend any money on anything uh, it had all the electricals on the ground you know which is a big no-no you have fires and the commission will let you do it anymore it had steel flow lines and leaks everywhere clamps all over it tanks oil tanks had holes in them I mean it was just total junk injection pump was thrashed and anyway that's basically why it was free is because it needed to do everything and to him at that point he was an old man and uh, he was wanting to retire and oil prices were negative and he was happy basically just to be able to, to give it away and I bought it it's adjacent to some other stuff we've got and uh, anyway his injection well uh, it was it was mechanically it would pass a mechanical integrity test. It was legal as far as the commission was concerned. Everything was there hooked up and was correct. Uh, but it was plugged up. It wouldn't take any water. You could try to turn the pump on. Uh, it would just pressure up and wrap the gauge out, and something would explode. It wouldn't take any water. And there's another deep lease uh, that's adjacent to it. And basically, they were taking his water out of these two wells. It wasn't much water. It was maybe. 20 or 30 barrels between the two wells of water and so anyway for the last decade or so he had been putting all his water in this other formation that was deeper uh, which isn't illegal I mean that's perfectly fine uh, but the problem is it had drained I didn't know at the time when I bought it but learned later it had drained this formation uh, that we're producing out here and it just wasn't any pressure in it basically so anyway um, I took and went out there, we pulled the tubing out of the injection well, uh, got my reverse circulator out there with a drill bit, drilled at the bottom, cleaned the well up, uh, got the well all fixed like it should have been, and went to put in the water that this formation is 1600 is making back in the 1600. Well, over the next few weeks or a couple of months, this lease went to making two barrels, and two and a half barrels, and three barrels, and three and a half barrels, and four barrels, and at one point it was making five. And so now we've just paid five thousand dollars, though we spent a bunch of money on it. You know, we got twenty or thirty grand in it probably uh, for at least it makes five barrels, which is an absolute, absolute home run. Well, anyway, three or four or five months later, uh, the, this well that we've been working on gets a tubing leak in it. Not a big deal. Uh, get a rig out there, pull the well. Uh, we run back in, and we hit something about 80 feet or 100 feet from the bottom of the well. And so you're like, oh man, you know, what, what's down there? So anyway, uh, we think it might just be trash and sand and stuff. We take my reverse circulator out there, try to wash through it, try to drill through it. 
uh, it's hard as a rock. It's obviously tubing or junk or who knows what. Something's dropped in this hole. When I call a guy who bought it from me, he said, I don't have any idea. Uh, that's how it's always been. We just tube it a couple of joints off bottom and, and go on with it. Well, uh, a good well like this, if you're going to tube it that high off bottom, there's a pretty good chance that if you can get the tubing all the way to bottom, that it's going to make even more oil than it already is. And you're going to increase your, your, you know, your home run here. And so anyway, we go with a washover pipe and uh, actually let me back up. That's not true. I gotta let, I'll have to step out here. Anyway, we go down there and drill on it, try to get through it. Can't. So I make the decision, well, let's just put it back just like it was. And so that's what we did. We run a tubing pump in it, um, you know, run a new pump in it. I should say it was what the tubing pump will come out of it. And uh, go in there and the stupid thing won't pump. And so we have to get a rig back on it, pull it back out. Um, it had a piece of trash that it had got in one of the ball and seats, run it back in there, pumps, try to get the pump. It pumps overnight, but come up to the next morning, it was stuck up, couldn't get the plunger to come out of the barrel with a rig. Uh, we end up having to strip it, which is a, a terminology uh, when the pump is stuck, you can't get the rods out, so you got to pull the tube in, and as the tube comes up, you either try to back the rods out of the middle of the tube, or you have to take a hacksaw and cut the sucker rods off. Get the pump out of it. The pump had a little piece of trash you got between the barrel and the plunger, and runt my new barrel and plunger with the pump. You know, probably over two thousand bucks just chunking trash, junk iron, or scrap brass, I might add. And so anyway, you know, we're mad about it. Old's cheap, you know, it's a significant amount of money to throw away. Um, at this point, we decide we're gonna go in there and try to get out whatever's in there. Uh, Cause we're thinking that there's trash that's in the pipe in the case and under whatever's sticking up. So we run a washover pipe, which is like a thin wall piece of sort of like exhaust pipe, if you would. And what it's designed to do is you can actually go over the outside of something to see if it's tubing sticking up, it's 20 foot long, or if it's actually something that's solid. And it went over it, so we knew that it was like a joint of tubing sticking up. Went in there with a tubing spear, couldn't catch it. Uh, went in with a longer piece of washover pipe and actually drove down on it and collapsed the end of this washover pipe and it actually hooked around this jointed tubing and we drug a jointed tubing out of it. Uh, ended up running another spear, got a packer anyway, got all this junk out of it. Worked on this thing for like two weeks. And uh, going over our circulator, cleaning out the bottom, uh, get the well, you know, as clean and pristine as it was the day it was drilled. And uh, going there with it, you know, the new pump and, and rods and tubing, run everything to bottom. The same scenario happens. We pick up a piece of trash in this, in this brand new tubing pump, stick the pump, uh, the rods, we could not get the rods to back off. We had to cut nearly all the rods coming out of the hole, throw a whole string of rods away, a whole nother pump, a couple thousand bucks, plus all this rig time we had on it. You know, rig's 150 bucks an hour. We're talking about, you know, a couple of weeks worth of $150 an hour. Um, basically just do the same thing. We run, you know, a new pump, a uh, new string of rods and hang it on and get the well to pump. The well pumps down, it won't make any fluid. It won't make any oil, any water it pumps plumb off. It'll just barely trickle out every stroke. You know, it's making like five gallons of water an hour or something. And so this is not a super unusual situation. And what caused this was when we were trying to get all this junk out of the bottom of it and all the trash, you know, you get grit and rust and sand and stuff that's in the bottom of the well. Uh, we're trying to wash it out. You get, it gets all stirred up in the bottom of this well. And then you've got the hydrostatic pressure of the well being full of water as you're trying to wash it out. And it pushes and packs this crap back into the sand formation and seals the sand formation off. Now usually to fix this, uh, you put acid in it. And so the correct way to do it is to pull the rods, pull the tubing, and run the tubing back in without a pump uh, so that you don't eat the chrome off your pump and you pump it down, the acid down the tube, and the acid costs $3,500. I got a pump, I pumped it myself. Uh, the cheap way to do it, which is what I did, and it, and it bit me, of course, is that you'll take your, uh, and shut both valves on your pump head, top of the well, put a gauge in it, turn the well on, and have the well 
uh, pump deadhead against those shut valves and you'll put up a couple hundred psi and seal uh, that pressure in between the tubing and the pump and then you'll just dump the acid down the casing down the backside down the outside of the tubing and use hydrostatic pressure to push the acid back into the formation well anyway this is what i did um put put you know thirty five hundred dollars worth of hydrochloric acid in it and uh let it sit flushed it come out the next day turn the well on the well pumped when i turned it on the next day the well wouldn't pump and i had got acid up in that bronze chrome barrel and destroyed my pump yet again so we get a rig out there you know i'm thinking by this time surely the well's fixed um pull rods pull to it run everything back in with a new pump and you got to remember this is the fourth pump i bought for these things a couple thousand bucks a piece is adding up pretty quick uh the fourth pump run everything back in it thinking for sure now the well's fixed uh, it seemed to take water pretty well when we put the acid in it and uh get it all in hang it on and it's the same thing the well won't make any fluid won't make a drop of fluid and so anyway at this point i'm pretty perplexed i'm, I'm kind of second guessing myself you know did i dream this thing made oil? you know I'm looking back through my gauge book and stuff and anyway the only other step i could come up with to do so we got a rig back out there um we laid everything down left the the pump out of it just run the tubing back in it without the rods and we run a packer in it and uh, i don't have a, a, a i don't know if i got a packer laying around here i can show you or not but anyway a packer is just a mechanical thing uh that will seal the two inch tubing to the inside of the four inch casing with some slips and stuff and anyway run it run it packer in it on the other tubing uh got a pump truck out here and pumped into the well real hard like at four or five barrels per minute a couple thousand pounds to try to blow whatever crap was in it out farther into the formation to open it up anyway got that done uh got the little rig back out here to uh to pull the packer out and run the pump back in and we got the packer about halfway out of it and the packer hung up don't know what it hung up on we couldn't get it out i uh, had to get a big rig we had to pull uh, about 60,000 pounds or so on it and the Packers got a sheer ring it's kind of hard to explain but uh, I'll, I'll do a video about Packers at some point but anyway basically destroyed the Packer to get the Packer back out of it got everything back out of it um, at this point it's been quite a few months six months or so since since we pumped this well and uh, and I didn't want to buy another new pump the pump that was in it ended up somewhere else and the pump I had on the shelf up there which I thought was good enough uh, obviously with what this video was about you know the pump was not in that good of shape and, uh, and we ran that back in it and then and then this is where we are now you can do the math uh, the several weeks I had you know $150 an hour rig on it all the pumps I bought the acid you know the pump truck was a couple thousand bucks to come out there and pump into it end up with a fortune in this stupid thing uh, probably thirty or forty thousand dollars I would I would guess I, I don't know I, I don't really want to put a pencil to it to be honest but anyway um it's back to making its oil and this is the very first day in, in close to a year i don't know six or eight or nine months that i've actually seen it make any substantial amount of oil now this is not a well i'm going to get rich on but it's hopefully it's going to make two or three barrels uh hopefully the lease will make you know four something like that and uh and and this at least will in the next year or two will pay back all this money i've thrown in it and uh, when you get to that point and you got all your money back then it's you know it's it's a little smoother sailing if you wanted to sell it somebody comes by and offers you some money for it uh, then you can sort of do something else but you know you get all this money tied up in this stupid well and, uh, and, it, and it gets to be it gets to be a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes with some of that stuff anyway i just want to give this as a good example of a lease i bought to make a little bit of oil it was almost free and every every single step in that in that process of trying to fix that well you always think with with you know with reasonable intel that this is the final step you know we're only a few thousand bucks away from having the well fixed and it's always something and always something and always something you know it's got good tubing in it hopefully that pump will last a while you know hopefully this thing will run a year and we won't have to work on it um you know like i kind of said the uh, uh it's only been running you know it's just 11 now 
it's only been running you know producing any substantial fluid for 20 hours or something hopefully it'll settle down and make less fluid will slow it down and it'll last a really long time but anyway that's about the size i would appreciate you watching i just wanted to give you a a, a scenario that's not that uncommon uh, in, in a situation, you know, you get a free well, get a free lease. Um, you know, I paid $5,000 for that lease and I've got, you know, 30 or 40 in that well, plus another probably 20 or 30 or 40 in the, and the rest of the lease by running overhead electrical everywhere, bringing the electrical up to spec, working on the injection well, rebuilding the injection pump, new oil tanks, a separator, uh, ran all new flow lines over it. I might have more money than that in it anyway just wanted to give uh, give that kind of scenario because that that's not that uncommon anyway appreciate you watching like share subscribe and all the good things and like i say if you want to catch the rest of that playlist you can click on it down there in the description but uh hopefully the wind quest blowing and i'm gonna go do something else we will catch you on the next one